My name is Sharman Wynarski. I'm the Academic Chair of Specialty Nursing and Dental Programs here at Saskatchewan Polytechnic. So to get into dental assisting, uh, you need to have a 65 average to get in and it's first qualified, first admitted, which means if you meet the qualifications and most of that is the basic courses from high school. So your math, one science, so it could be either biology or chemistry or physics, uh, your English, as well as um, some other electives as well. Um, you can get in through that way. And so there's usually quite a few people that apply to it. So um, first qualified, first admitted, it might take you just another year or so to get into it just for that. And for dental hygiene, it's a bit different as the requirement is 70% average. You do need some sciences, same as dental assisting and your core courses as well, your Englishes, your maths. Um, but um, this process is a little bit different. It's a competitive process. So there's two phase approach to getting into hygiene. The first would be just to meet the requirements of your average. Now, when I say 70 is the baseline to get in, most applicants would suggest that they needed to have at least 85 to 90 percent average. That's usually in the last five to ten years that's been the averages of people that have been getting into the program at first. So um, once they get into that um, stage and if they have the higher marks then they go into phase two which would be a competitive essay portfolio as well. So and then there is a committee um, that chooses the applicants from there. So that's how you can get in um, both of those programs. So dental assisting is a 10 month program. And of course it's fully interactive. So there is lecture based things, but oftentimes those lecture based things are paired with lab and clinical requirements that we do right here on campus in our brand new renovated dental clinics. So we would do a full year and it's a very busy year. Often one of those things that you miss something or if you blink, you miss something in the course. So really high paced. Um, course. And for dental hygiene, they also have similar. Um, the first year for dental hygiene would be a full year of lecture-based courses that you can do. Thus far, we've been doing it online, though um, in the past we've done it classroom-based that first year. And then there's two other years following that of practical and lab and lectures, as well as a full on-site clinic for both programs. So both sets of students, dental assisting and dental hygiene, will see their own clients in, in the clinics as well. So it's quite interactive and fast paced. You have to be willing to learn something and it's great to learn by experience too. Yes, well, one thing for dental assisting is I find a lot of dental assistants will head into the dental hygiene program later in their career. It might be they just want to add a new skill set to their dental assisting practice, or they want to do something um, more than, than chair-side assisting. I have both qualifications, actually. I'm a dental assistant and dental hygienist, so I've done both routes, and that was the case for me. I wanted to have a little more to offer in the office than, than just assisting skills and or just hygiene skills. I wanted to be more uh, portable for both. So. Um, so dental assisting, there's a lot of courses that will transfer over to dental hygiene, which is great. So um, some of it is straight transfer credit. Some of it they can get through PLAR, which is Plier Learning Assessment Recognition. So either of those processes, which really helps to bridge in. Now for dental hygiene, um, you can actually finish off a degree after. It is a three-year advanced diploma, but you can finish a degree either through another institution. Um, I did my degree for dental hygiene afterwards. So I did have my diploma for hygiene and my um, bachelor of science for dental hygiene specialty afterwards. And some um, faculty have actually gone on to do health sciences degrees, which was a lot more into policy and stuff. Or if you want, you can go into education. So yeah, there's a lot of different pathways you can go through um, to get into different things. And um, for assisting, I would say that most of the courses that they would take may not directly transfer, but they definitely do assist them in their education pathways in the future.
Oh my goodness, for dental assisting and dental hygiene, you can pick a job pretty well at this current moment. They are definitely high demand and high need right now. Um, they can't get enough dental assistants or dental hygienists out there in community right now. So uh, I would say your job prospects for both are extremely high. Um, I think that's a great place to be in that even our students that are in school right now currently some of them already have jobs when they're finished school so that's a fantastic prospect so i would say you're you're pretty set on getting a job after you're finished willing to learn that's first and foremost coming with an open attitude willing to learn something new and willing to practice those skills because they are different than the average skill that you'd be trying to attain. So sometimes it takes uh, a little bit of perseverance and persistence to get some of the skills. And, and um, I would say somebody that's organized, um, dental hygiene for three years can be a little bit challenging to organize. You have to organize clients as well for yourself. Um, whereas the dental assisting side, you'll have clients booked in for you. So it's a little bit easier that way. But um, I would suggest having some organization skills and really being dedicated to actually putting some work in homework wise nightly to get yourself on top of things. If you fall behind, it's really hard to pick it up. And I've made that same speech to the students each and every year. Really make sure you're keeping up with studying and do a few hours each and every night. Treat it like your job to make sure you're done at 3.30 and your job wouldn't be done till five. Spend that extra hour and a half doing your homework. It'll pay off in the end. All of our instructors um, will have some adult education component behind them, whether it is an adult teaching and learning certificate or they've gone on to do a degree or a master's in adult education. Often that is the case in our program, so that is first and foremost. Second, we really put the students first. So I would say that we go above and beyond um, for our students and making sure that their learning experience is great. And I see often there is a need from the faculty to make sure that they are staying up to date with the newest things that they can add in and constant improvement of their courses and really looking at that student feedback. So um, I would say also the student supports that we offer here through our student services. Um, so things like accessibility services, we will make sure that you're getting in touch with those. So I think that we've got a really good market on, on getting our students well-educated. I would say taking your basic courses. So definitely your English is all of the English that you need, uh, all of the maths. So and not, um, I think that would be foundations math is what they call it now, or math 30. Uh, um, one science for sure for assisting. So that could be either biology or chemistry or physics. Um, for hygiene, I would suggest you have two, either biology, chemistry, and physics. So. For that one, it would be biology is the first sure, that one that you need, and then you could choose either physics or chemistry as your additional sciences. So um, math is important because in hygiene, you will be doing statistics as well as one of your first year courses. So um, you're doing that first year university level course in your first year. So those would be the courses I would um, take into account and make sure you're doing those ones really well. So our students would have a typical day of doing some lectures. Oftentimes they'll do some lectures in the morning and then spin into doing clinical stuff in the afternoon, though well, in the end, near the end of your studies, you're going to be mostly doing hands on clinical stuff and less of the lecture pieces. So I would say the first first month or so of your program, you're going to be doing a lot of more brain work. So you're going to be learning some of those theories and definitions and getting terminology down. And then you're gonna put those things into action. So it's be a very busy day for you. And often our days start early around 8.30 and can take you right till 4.30, depending on if you're in a lab or a clinic that takes you there. So um, 
you're going to be hands-on with students and you're going to be hands-on with um, mannequins. You're going to be hands-on with clients eventually as well. So um, we progress from the mannequins to peers to working with our clients in the clinic. So you get a really good, robust experience that way. So those of you that need to have that experiential learning, you, this is the place for you for sure. Oh, for sure. I started out my career journey um, doing a few years of university, kind of wondering what am I going to do in my life? And I ended up finding um, dental assisting and dental hygiene. I thought I would like to do one of those careers. So I did apply to both programs back many, many moons ago. I got into dental assisting first as it's a little bit more, more of a challenge to get into hygiene. That's okay. Persistence is key, as you'll find out soon. Uh, dental assisting, I took the program for a year and then I went off to work and waited on a long waiting list at that point, because at that point, the hygiene program was a waiting list. I enjoyed working in private practice for a good um, seven, eight years before I returned to go into dental hygiene. So um, I had hands-on practice for years, enjoying um, chair-side assisting, and doing some office management as well. Um, so that would entail doing front office reception work, ordering supplies and that type of thing. Then I went back to dental hygiene school and got my uh, two year uh, diploma from, of course, SAS Polytechnic, it was SIAS at the time. And uh, I was not done. I was thinking to myself, I still wanna continue on because I just feel like I can have something more to give. And I really found the instructors something that I admired. So I really wanted to emulate that and perhaps come back and be a teacher at the time. So I went and continued my career path after um, SAS Polytechnic, um, doing a degree path. So I did that actually through UBC and I got my degree in dental sciences, dental hygiene specialty. So um, after that, I paused and then I came to work for Saskatchewan Polytechnic as a faculty member. I started tutoring first and then became a faculty member. A few years later, I became a program head and was starting my master's in adult education. So um, my education journey is not over. I continue to do some learning here, there and everywhere. Uh, where it's going to take me next after this, not sure, maybe a PhD, who knows, but um, I, I would just like to say if you're ever thinking of continuing your education journey, you really should just keep on learning every day. Okay, if you're going to apply to the dental assisting program, apply early, apply quickly, apply as soon as you think you want to. Um, it is a waiting list to get in if you, uh, there's lots of applications. We usually get about double the amount of applications for both programs um, coming in. So apply early. And that one, when it says first qualified, first admitted, um, that is the truth. So, and I would say be persistent in it as well. So don't give up if you don't get in the first year. You can always get in it again. So uh, dental hygiene, if you're going to apply to dental hygiene, again, be persistent and really think about what would make you a good dental professional. So what would make you a good dental assistant? What would make you a good dental hygienist? Another piece I would always recommend to those that are interested and in thinking, I might want to do dental. Go and shadow in an office. Your office would love to see you there watching and taking an interest in, in the dental field. Um, oftentimes, and that's where I got my start, is I went and watched and observed what a dental assistant and dental hygienist did. And I thought, yeah, this is where I need to be. So I would recommend doing that um, as well. So, and be, be stubborn and be persistent. Those are the biggest things I can give you. And ask for help if you need and ask many questions if you want as well.